This is section, uh, well, I guess I should say this is an introduction to section 9.2. Um, this is not actually section 9.2, but we're going to introduce section 9.2 by using what's called algebra tiles. Okay, algebra tiles are a math manipulative or an algebra manipulative that we can use. They're kind of training wheels to help us understand basic algebra concepts. And let me start here. We're on page 561. So again, you might want to pause the video, go to page 561, and follow along there as I'm going through some of these things. Now, what are algebra tiles? I just kind of told you. They are shapes that we use that can help us visualize algebra concepts. And what we're going to learn in section 9.2 is how to multiply polynomials together. Now remember from the previous video, polynomials could be a monomial. Like let me just make up a monomial here at the top. Like here would be a monomial like 5x. Or remember, and maybe I should put mono, this is a monomial. Um, here would be a binomial, 5x plus 3. Remember we have two terms, that's called a binomial. You could have trinomials, 3x squared plus 2x plus 8. This would be a trinomial. Remember, every one of these are part of the polynomial family. Polynomial is just a, a plural um, for that amount. So monomials, binomials, trinomials. We could have polynomials with four terms, I suppose. Like here would be a four-term polynomial. And what we're going to learn in section 9.2 is how we multiply polynomials together. For example, how I could multiply 5x plus 3 with, with this whole four-term polynomial. We're going to learn how we can multiply those things together. So there's a little bit of complexity to that. So what we're going to do today and what this little thing introduced on page 561 is we're going to show you visually what's going on as we're multiplying these polynomials together by using what's, what these manipulatives call algebra tiles. So first of all, we have to learn what all the tiles are. And I gave you a sheet that you can cut out. And if you want, you can even color it. I, I put some markings on it so you know the colors of these things. But um, what does each of these tiles represent? So when you look at your little sheet, the first thing you're going to see is little square tiles. Now your sheet isn't colored, but you can color your tiles. Um, one side of the tile, these little tiles, you can color yellow, and then on the other opposite side, you color them red. Well, the yellow side represents positive 1, just like a number 1. And the red side is the negative side, and that would represent negative 1. So that's what these little tiles represent on that sheet I gave you. We have to understand what a zero pair is when we work with algebra tiles. When you put one positive tile together and one negative tile together, it's like adding one and negative one together, and it gives you what's called a zero pair. So whenever you combine a positive tile and a negative tile of the same type, those basically create zero pair and they vanish because one and negative one gives you nothing. So taking out one red tile and one yellow tile and combining it together would give you zero. In other words, I'm just going to cross these out, these would basically disappear because they, oh, they offset each other. When you add them up, you get zero. If you did the following, if you took out five yellow tiles, so I have positive five, and I took out seven negative tiles and put them together, I am going to get two extra red tiles because do you notice, let me circle, these five yellow tiles will pair up with these five red tiles and create a zero pair. And when these be created zero pair, I'm left with two red tiles, which means when I, what I'm really doing here is I'm taking 5 plus negative 7, and I'm getting negative 2. I have two extra red tiles left. So algebra tiles, I guess, could have been a good way for your teacher back in third, fourth grade even to teach you how to add positive and negative numbers. You can see that 5 plus negative 7 was going to give you negative 2. 
then on your sheet you're going to have some longer tiles. They have the same width as the unit tile, but they're longer. Um, these long tiles represent variables. This longer tile means positive x, or actually, let me erase that. It's not really, it doesn't have to be x, it can be any variable. It means we have a positive, and this is, is this going to erase for me? I guess not. Okay. I can't get that to erase. I guess I should just write down, it could be any variable. It's a positive variable. It could be y, it could be z, it could be x, whatever variable I want. This just represents an unknown amount, positive, and red, the opposite side would be red, one side green, one side red. This just would mean it's the opposite or the negative of that. Again, it could be any variable. So once again, if I take one positive variable tile or x tile and one negative variable tile and put them together, I'm going to get a zero pair out of that. So I have a question for you. If you now take out on your sheet, if you cut these out, if you take out four positive variable tiles and two negative, I'll call them x, x tiles. So I have four positive x and two negative x tiles and I put them together, what do I get? You can pause for a minute and try that. Well, what you're going to get is you're going to have two x tiles left over. Because when you took out the four green tiles and the two red tiles, the two red and two green make a zero pair. You're left with two green tiles. You have two x tiles left over. It's important to understand you cannot add x tiles with the little one unit tiles. They're not alike. Okay? I can't add these together and get five. Think about this. These stand for x. This takes us back to stuff we've already learned earlier in the year. When you take 2x and you add 3, do you somehow get 5 out of that? And I think you all know the answer already is no, because these are not like terms. I cannot add things together that are not alike. So this simply works out. It's just 2x plus 3. I can't add these together. I just write 2x plus 3. They cannot be combined into one term. I don't get 5 out of that. I think as a whole we understand that already pretty good. What about these really large square tiles? Well, the large square tiles represent, well, large squared amounts. This would be considered positive x squared and this would be negative x squared. The reason for that, and let me show you why we get that, and I got to draw that up. Okay, if I take, let me try to draw this neatly here. I got to turn my layer on. Um, if you take an x tile, times another x tile, oops, ah shoot, I just got to erase that one, I didn't draw it well. Do you see how if I take this first x tile and this x tile, it's like an area problem. x times x gives me x squared. This large tile is a positive x squared. If I took out a, a variable, a negative x, and a negative x, that gives me negative x squared. So again, the large blue tile is positive x squared. On the opposite side, you can color it red. That would represent a negative x tile. And again, if I combine these two x squared tiles together, it gives me a zero pair. It would be nothing. So how can I use these to figure out a multiplication of polynomials? Like here's a, a good example. I have x times 3, the polynomial, times 2x plus 1. So specifically, when I look at this, this is actually a binomial times a binomial. So how can I use algebra tiles to figure this out? Well, and they kind of show you a picture of this on page 561. You start off by getting out x plus 3. So let's do that. And you can see here I took out x plus and that didn't show up. Hmm. One, two, three. I wish those would have showed up in there. They're not. Maybe I'll write on top. X and three. There's X plus three. And can you see over here I have two X plus one. And I'm kind of framing a rectangle. I'm framing a rectangle with X plus three and two X plus one. What I now need to do is fill in this space, and when I fill in this space, when I fill in this rectangular area that's empty right now, when I fill this in with tiles, 
I will find out what x plus 3 times 2x plus 1 is. So let's fill in that rectangle. Well, when I do that, I can do it really easy. Okay, it's kind of like um, a spreadsheet. Treat this like a spreadsheet. In column 1, row 1, I have x times x, which is x squared. In column 2, row 1, I've got to take 1 times x. Well, 1 times x is x, so that gets the next tile. In row 3, or I misspoke, column 3, 1 times x is x. And in column 4, 1 times x is x. Now let's go down here to row number 2. I've got to take column 1 times row 2. x times x is x squared. Then in column 2, row 2, 1 times x is x. In column 3, row 2, 1 times x gives me another x. And in column 4, row 2, 1 times x is x. And now I've got to go to row 3. I've got to do column 1 times row 3. x times 1 is x. Column 2 times row 3. 1 times 1 is 1. Column 3 times row 3. 1 times 1 is 1. And column 4 times row 3, 1 times 1 is 1. Now remember, I'm not adding right now. I was multiplying. Remember, I can't add 1 and x. They're not the same, but 1 times x is just x. So I was just multiplying column by row, respectively, and now I filled this up. Can you see here, when I fill up my empty rectangular area, I just filled it up, so let me go back. I filled this up. Can you see how I have two x squared tiles? I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 x tiles, and I have three unit tiles. When I fill up that area, I will get the answer to that those two binomials being multiplied out. The correct answer is 2x squared plus 7x plus 3. Now I'm going to have you try one. On page 561, at the very bottom of the page, you'll see for question 1, question 1 says, that I want you to multiply using your tiles. I want you to draw this out. You can use your tiles and arrange them at home on, on the table, and then you can draw a picture of it. I want you to multiply x plus 1 times x plus 3. So you should, the same way we did here, you should be getting out, for this problem, you should be getting out 1x tile and one one tile. So maybe I'll just draw, actually let me just draw it here for you. Let's do that. Okay, just to help you set it up. You should be getting out one x tile and one one tile. Let me do that. Here. And then down this way we ought to be getting out one x tile and three one tiles. Trying to draw this as best I can. There we go. And now you need to fill in this space inside this rectangle. And what you fill in here will be the answer to x plus 1 times x plus 3. And I want you to do it in the same way I did before. Can you see how I have column 1 and column 2? And I have 1, 2, 3, 4 rows. Just multiply column by row and fill this in. I'm going to stop the video there. Uh, the correct answer you should get when you fill this in, you should have 1x squared tile, you should have 4x tiles, and 3 1 tiles. I'm going to stop there. Um, see it, and when you come in tomorrow, if we got stuck on that, we can go through it more.